The two big ones are the need to stabilize population and stabilize climate. Uh, if we can succeed with those two, then many of the other problems will take care of themselves. Um, but if we don't succeed at those, then we, we, we may fail in many of the other efforts. Um, for example, if we cannot stabilize population and if we cannot stabilize climate, there is not an ecosystem on Earth we can save. Everything will change. We can set land aside and call them parks or wildlife reserves and build fences around them, but if climate changes, the ecosystem will change. Um, so there's, there's a long list of, uh, of, of stresses that are developing in the relationship between the global economy and the Earth's ecosystem. They include desertification, deforestation, overgrazing, overplowing, soil erosion, rising CO2 levels, um, rising temperature, uh, more destructive storms, uh, falling water tables, uh, rivers running dry, um, uh, disappearing species, dying coral reefs. A strange phenomenon was detected 15 years ago among the amphibians around the world. The populations of frogs and toads are either disappearing or decreasing, even though they are different among each other and are located in remote territories. It seems like a worldwide plague because there are no local reasons to justify the extinctions. Scientists are now beginning to understand the case. The decrease in the ozone layer, climate change due to the emission of contaminating gases, and the organic modification of the soil by fertilizers are the reality behind the global attack suffered by the amphibians. The global average temperature that has changed in the last hundred years is only about a half a degree, 0.6 of a degree. This is, this is a tiny change. So why are we concerned about it? Well, the reason we're concerned is because of the rate of the change. Geological changes have been much larger, but in most cases they have occurred much more slowly. And therefore organisms have been able to adjust to those changes. Imagine plants, forests. Now at the end of the last ice age, when there was a global warming that took place over a period of around 10,000 years, Darwin noticed that what happened in Europe was that the flora and fauna of the ice age simply migrated in southern Europe to higher elevations and migrated northwards to northern Europe at low elevations, if they have 10,000 years, they don't have a problem. But if they only have 20 or 30 years, trees can't migrate that fast. Okay, so it's not the magnitude of global change that is a concern, it's the rate of the change. In 1992, an algae of tropical origin, the Calerpa taxifolia, reached the Spanish Mediterranean coasts. It has the ability to develop anywhere, but its fame is due to the danger it presents for many animal and plant species that are not tropical. The story of the Calerpa taxifolia in the Mediterranean illustrated another threat that affects many autochthonous species which are exterminated by the presence of foreign species. In 1982, the algae began to be cultivated at the aquarium in Monaco. Given its unique energy and ability to adapt, using it in the fish tanks was ideal. Two years later, it was seen for the first time on the other side of the window at the famous aquarium. It probably passed through a drain pipe during cleaning. Thus, in 1984, it occupied one square meter of that Mediterranean zone. Six years later, it was discovered five kilometers from the aquarium, and an exterminating trace could be followed through this entire section of the French coast. By the summer of the year 2000, the killer algae had already devastated enormous marine areas of Australia and had been discovered on the California coasts. Today in the Mediterranean, 
it occupies 7,000 hectares, which represents an astonishing growth in just a few years. And to date, the attempts to wipe it out have not been exactly positive. Suddenly, there are organisms that reach a place where for their happiness and for the misfortune of everyone else, they have ideal environmental conditions and lack the natural elements that control them in their place of origin. These elements control their explosive capacity, their tendency to dominate. And like a bull in a china shop, they override other plants or animals that were never prepared, from an evolutionary point of view, to fight against this imperialist capacity. I think this is a conclusion that really defines what happens to these organisms. They are imperialist living beings that want everything for them, and they also have the power to take over everyone else. Some of the notable cases are the killer algae in the Mediterranean Sea, the rabbits in Australia, and the North American crabs in Spanish rivers. Most of the time, however, the extinctions due to a strange presence in the ecosystem are never registered since their existence is unknown. An example is the case of this shrub on the small island of La Palma in the Canary Islands. Its disappearance is due to the introduction of goats and rabbits, herbivores foreign to this environment. Although the example of the Bencomia stipulata, the name of this plant, is not spectacular, its story proves that we're dealing with a worldwide phenomenon. Scientists are not exactly sure how many species are disappearing due to the destruction of their habitats, the effects of climatic change, and the introduction of foreign species into a habitat. The most accepted calculations are close to 27,000 species lost every year. It's a very high disappearance rate, and the extinctions are occurring faster than those that have shaken the earth in the past. These 27,000 lost species per year means that in 1,000 years, 27 million species would be lost, which means in 1,000 years, which is very little on the geological scale, practically all life on Earth would be lost. In this sense, every scientist is in agreement. There is no doubt about it. We are living in a time of major crisis, a major crisis of extinctions, meaning that species are becoming extinct so quickly or faster than during other periods of the Earth's history in which species became quickly extinct. For example, at the time when the dinosaurs disappeared, this was something that occurred suddenly. On the geological scale, it occurred suddenly, which means hundreds of thousands of years, even a million years, which is what the dinosaurs took to completely disappear. A constellation of satellites watches over the well-being of the Earth. Thanks to them, we have a more precise understanding of how the hole in the ozone layer is growing and how much forest is lost every year. In March of 2002, the European Space Agency placed Envisat, the best equipped spacecraft of our time, into orbit. Placed at 800 kilometers away from the Earth's surface, it's able to completely examine the planet in only three days. The Envisat has high power antennas and all classes of detection systems, which allows it to analyze the short and medium term consequences of fires, of industrial pollution, of global warming, and of volcanic eruptions. Because of its enormous versatility and because of the extremely valuable information that it provides, Scientists now have a tool with which they will be able to predict the future of every ecosystem on our planet with barely any margin of error. The more precise the X-rays of the Earth are, the benefits of an ecosystem working at full capacity or the dangers of destruction will be better understood so that public opinion becomes conscious of the importance of a healthy state of nature. Some scientists are trying to assign economic values to things, like clean air, which until recently did not appear to have any value at all. In a general approximation, 
Researchers have estimated that nature will produce consumer goods every year that are double the gross domestic product of all the countries on Earth.